Hello, doing a quick recording here of Call of Duty Warzone Season 4. Today we're going to be testing the Intel Xeon E5 2470 paired with the RX 570 video card. The settings that we're going to be going over in this video are high, normal, and low. So we're going to be starting off here on high settings, all at 1920 by 1080 p and throughout this video, we will be going over normal and low as well. In the top left-hand corner of the screen, I have MSI Afterburner running there, where you can keep an eye out on the CPU, GPU usage, along with the frame rate and frame time graph. And while your attention's up there, you'll also notice that Call of Duty is an absolute memory hog. Currently using about almost 15 and a half gigs of memory. I think it'll probably go to 16 at one point there. Uh, but yeah, you definitely want at least 16 gigabytes of memory in your system if you are looking to run this game. Uh, for those of you who are not familiar with this processor, the Intel Xeon E5 um, 2470 is built on the Sandy Bridge generation of processors, so that's similar to even something like the i7-2600. So it's at 32 nanometers, except we've got eight core. I'll get out of this truck, it's too loud. We've got eight cores, 16 threads, a base clock of 2.3 gigahertz, and an all core turbo of 2.8. So currently we're running at 2.8 gigahertz, which is pretty decent for games like Call of Duty that are able to utilize multiple cores and threads. Um, but other games, like let's say League of Legends, they're not going to run so well on this system because, yeah, 2.8 gigahertz on the Sandy Bridge architecture is nothing really impressive there. High settings is running pretty well here, uh, pushing just around 60 FPS, and on the buggy, yes, it is loud, but as we move across the map quickly, it does stress the system pretty well there. Uh, so you can see around 60 FPS on average. I personally don't recommend high settings. I'd rather look for something that'll give me more around 75 FPS. I find that's a sweet spot to play on. Um, but yeah, just running around here on high settings, you can see uh, it does stay around that 60, even dipped into that 50s for one moment there. I will try to get a bit of high ground and then I will immediately swap over to the uh, normal settings because we don't really need to take that long on each setting. You just got to run around the map a little bit and that should already give you a solid idea of what the system is capable of. All right, this should be a pretty decent spot to change our settings. All right, looking over the horizon here, you can see our frame rate is at about 57, 58 FPS. And hopefully we don't get sniped here. But as I lower our settings down to normal, just got to make sure I'm adjusting the correct settings. So these are our normal settings for 1080p here. You can have a quick look. And yeah, immediately we get a nice big FPS boost there. So kind of around that 70, 80 FPS mark. And if we get back in the vehicle, uh, you'll also see that the frame rate stays pretty consistent as we move across here. And that is one great thing about this CPU, is that when you do have those 8 cores, 16 threads, and you are playing a game like COD Warzone that can utilize multiple cores, multiple threads, you're able to get a really smooth and consistent frame rate. And again, I will mention, just because we're not in the middle of the city doesn't mean we're not stressing the system because I've tested the system both in the middle of the city as well as on the outside of the map here. And like COD is a pretty unoptimized game, which means no matter where you are on the map, you are still going to get pretty bad performance. So that's a plus and a minus, but in this case, it, it, it is a it's a pretty good plus there. Um, yeah, that is, that's how we're going to cross the bridge there. All right, we will run around a little bit more here on normal settings. And again, I'm, I will apologize and mention I'm not great at the game, so I do have to uh, use the buggy here. When we swap the settings down to low in just a moment, you will notice that the, uh, yeah, the quality does change quite a bit. All right. Perfect. All right. So looking in this one area, let me just make sure we're backed up against the wall there. Looking in this one area, we're getting about 87, 86, 84, 81 FPS. <laughs> I was trying to give one number, but it kept changing. Um, so yeah, what we're going to do here is lower all the settings starting from the bottom this time and uh, see if how much higher our frame rate can actually go or how much our CPU is going to be holding us back here. Just got to read these settings because yes, I'd like to go fast because you're watching this on a recording. Uh, but at the same time, I also have to make sure I'm adjusting the correct setting. So this is also interesting to make note of. We, we're pretty much getting about the same frame rate. The visual quality does go down quite a bit here. It says we're still at 100% GPU usage. Interesting. 
Um, but yeah, let's see if we get any FPS boost here. You can see the frame rate in the in the graphs there in the top left are still staying really nice and consistent, which is really nice. Uh, means we don't have to change anything there. Um, you know, let me just quickly loot up here. But yeah, also because we do have 8 core 16 threads, you can have the option to do a 1080p 60 FPS live stream with this system. So that is something you can consider doing. Basic video editing, the system can easily handle that, and especially for rendering, you use the CPU for render there. Uh, those 8 core 16 threads will easily outperform something like a 4th gen i5, which is also a pretty popular processor. All right, moving along kind of around that 87, 86 FPS mark. And yeah, our CPU usage is still staying really solid here. I don't know why he got out of his uh, car. Like this, that was that was just a game of roulette there. Like who's gonna chicken out? And clearly he did. Uh, so congratulations, buddy. You've made it to the recording. <laughs> Yeah, my aim is horrendous on this weapon. Interesting. Um, hang on, let's see. Uh, but we're still able to pick up kills pretty easily, kind of, as I just mentioned there. That's kind of cool. Even in combat, uh, the system does handle itself pretty well. But yeah, we're testing low settings in the Gulag, easily above 75 FPS. I'm pretty certain we're going to die here. Yep, just as I mentioned. But yeah, that's going to conclude our recording. Uh, what are you guys' thoughts on running like an older Sandy Bridge processor? Like we do have 8 core 16 threads, so we do have great multi-core performance. But then again, we're only running at 2.8 gigahertz on that 2012 micro architecture. So there are pluses and minuses with the system. I'd like to hear your thoughts. You can come chat with me in the comment section below. But yeah, hopefully this gives you a solid idea of how the Intel Xeon E5 2470 performs. And again, if you guys have any questions, you can always feel free to reach out in the comment section below. Thanks.